I asked last week when the news came out that Tom Brady had accidentally wandered into someone's house in Tampa when he was supposed to be meeting with Byron Leftwich, what gives? You're not supposed to be meeting with assistant coaches prior to the start of the offseason program. Brady supposedly walked into this guy's house, dropped a couple of duffel bags onto the floor, which likely included footballs. And uh, when I asked the NFL about it last week, they said nothing. I asked about it again yesterday. They issued a statement that they looked into it. No violation of any kind committed by Tom Brady or the Buccaneers in meeting with Byron Leftwich because all he was doing was picking up a playbook, something they could put on a tablet and send to his house. He had to go pick it up directly from Byron Leftwich. That's their story. They stuck to it, and the NFL bought it. And if you if you can't tell, I'm being sarcastic because I think there's a hell of a lot more here that they don't want to delve into because they don't want to disrupt the happy vibe in Tampa Bay uh, that uh, accompanies the arrival of Tom Brady, Peter. Yeah, I mean, you know, by the absolute letter of the law, that such a meeting shouldn't happen. And I don't know what happened in terms of, you know, what each party said. I'm sure the NFL called uh, either Leftwich or Brady or Arians and found out, you know, the the gist of all this. Mike, I mean, to me, this is one of those stories that, um, I think I'm not saying it's complicated, but I'm also making the point that you could probably also argue that in the 10 or 12 one hour Zoom chats that, uh, that the coach of the Cincinnati Bengals, Zach Taylor, had with Joe Burrow, that they weren't just asking about his background and his hobbies and everything. They're getting stuff done about the Cincinnati Bengals offense. So I've always thought that once April rolls around uh, and, and a guy is property of a new team or whatever, I've always thought that that is exactly like the legal tampering period. More happens than should happen in that legal tampering period. And if they would have uh, sanctioned uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, in in my opinion, and I'm not. I, I, if they had sanctioned the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for this, I think they could have easily opened up a case on every one of the other 31 teams and found something quite similar. Um, I'm not saying everyone, but but and I shouldn't say everyone, but a lot of them they would have found something similar. Well, like, uh, yeah, okay, so I don't buy it. Like, I'm throwing the Al River on challenge flag, okay? I mean, you know, again, uh, Mike, you made the points. Uh, yeah, they could have just, hey, Tom, download this on your iPad. Here's our playbook. Bam. You know, the duffel bags. I think they were footballs. That would be my assessment, just being an ex-quarterback and being that way, where I would think he might have gone to Byron Leftwich's house, and maybe they were going to have a little bit of a walkthrough and do go through some of the mechanics at the line of scrimmage or even lightly drop back and he throws a ball to Byron Leftwich, which is a play that's going to be instilled in the offense. My big thing is this, like, it's a stupid rule. Like, NFL, get the hell out of <laughs> here with these rules. Rule. How are Dumb you going to tell 43-year-old man how hard he can work and how great he wants to be? I mean, this is Tom freaking Brady. What do you think he was going to go down there and just sip pina coladas and be like, oh, I'll learn the offense at some point, guys. Blah, 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 blah. This is great. What a great suntan I got. No, he wants to be great. He wants to win a Super Bowl and shove it in everybody's face this year. Get rid of these stupid rules, NFL. I broke them every year I played. I would break them every time now. You're not going to tell me when I'm going to learn more football and get better as a player. Like, shut up with that crap. First of all, remind me to never drink pina coladas with you. I don't know what your pina colada consumption style is, but I think pina colada ends up getting everywhere when you glug it like that. Blah, 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 blah. Th this, is, this is one of the fundamental problems I have with the NFL, and this is the way the NFL finds a way to trip over its own shoelaces constantly. They set up these rules that don't reflect reality, and so you have these rules that you can't enforce because when you do enforce them, you look stupid, like when they whacked the Chiefs a few years ago for talking directly to Jeremy Macklin during the legal tampering window when they can only talk to his agent. They're not supposed to talk to the player. Oh, you talk to the player, you have to give up a third-round pick and $500,000 in fines. It's ridiculous because everybody does it. 
Bounty Gate. Everybody was doing something similar to what the Saints allegedly were doing. The list goes on and on and on of instances where the NFL reaches in like the claw and just grabs one team and makes an example out of them for breaking a rule that everybody breaks and that otherwise isn't enforced. So I, I'm with you, Chris. I hate to say it. I hate to agree with you on anything, but just get rid of these stupid rules or make the rules better reflect reality. Because then you have to look the other way when you catch someone red-handed. That's the problem. They caught the Bucks red-handed. And Chris, and Chris and I have been hearing all the rumors about all the stuff that's going on down in Tampa to get hashtag Tommy ready for the season. And this may just be scratching the surface when he accidentally walks into someone else's house and he was going to meet with Byron Leftwich. But, but just if you're not going to enforce the rules, then get rid of them. All right, another important point as it relates to the Buccaneers, Peter. And this came up over the weekend. Sean Payton inadvertently during the draft-a-thon gave Chris and I a topic that we milked uh, until the udder was dry yesterday. Sean Payton's belief that at any given time there are only 10 or 11 relevant teams in the NFL. The others just simply don't have a realistic shot at winning the Super Bowl. The 10 or 11 relevant teams are the ones you have to worry about when they're on your calendar. Does the presence of Tom Brady with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and we can throw Gronk on top of that too now but mainly Brady does that take the Buccaneers and move them from the category of irrelevant team to relevant team Peter your thoughts absolutely unequivocally yes and it's relevant both in terms of marketing and fandom and all that and also on the field we've talked about this before on this show Mike and that is that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers last December were on a four-game winning streak and had two home games left against Houston and Atlanta. I would argue that absolutely unequivocally, they should have finished 9-7. and seven. Jameis Winston lost two nail biters by throwing six interceptions, including a walk-off pick on the first play of overtime uh, to lose the game to the Atlanta Falcons. So I would argue that this was already with the most mistake-prone quarterback of modern times, this was already a nine-win team. And so to think that Tom Brady can't get him to 10 or 11 with the addition of Rob Gronkowski, whatever they get from him, with a young and growing defense, uh, I, I mean, how can they not be one of the most relevant teams in football? Yeah, well, yeah, I, I mean, I, listen, I, I agree with that. They're, they're in that conversation. You know, again, now, do I put them in there and where I go, you know, organizational wise, okay, are they on the same platform as the Chiefs, the Ravens, the Patriots, the Packers, the Eagles on a year to year basis? No, I don't think they've proven to us yet. And I think I still think that's what Sean Payton was talking about was more on the big scope, big picture of things. There's 10 teams that he's worried about being able to build a credible winner year after year and being able to sustain consistently being relevant in the NFL and Tampa, I'm not going to put them in that class, but when you just talk about the 10 or 11 relevant teams to the particular year, yes, they're definitely in it this year. I mean, to Peter's point, this is a team. I think a lot of people put a little mark next to last year to go, Ooh, watch out for the bucks next year. And then when you make some of the additions they have in free agency and a Tom Brady, to what both, both of you are saying, I mean, this is going to raise the level of the whole organization. You know, again, we're seeing what Tom Brady's work ethic is about. We just talked about it. He's willing to break rules and do whatever the hell he wants to do to get to become a better play, player and to make that team better. And I'm all for that. So keep breaking those damn rules, Tom. The hell with all that crap. And uh, yes, I think they are very relevant this year. And, and I think going to be in the mix very much so when it comes playoff time. This is a very rare occasion, though, for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to have a quarterback who's a short-timer, a head coach who's clearly a short-timer. They all kind of come together for this brief moment, one year, two years, three at the absolute maximum. And then on the horizon, major changes for the Buccaneers organization coming. But, hey, it's better than what they've been pretty much every year since 2002 when they won the Super Bowl, so they'll take it. It'll fill the stadium once we're allowed to have fans in the stadium. It'll sell jerseys. It'll win games, and it makes the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, for now, extremely relevant. And look, with every NFL season being a one-year-at-a-time proposition, 
you know, yeah, you'd rather be a team that contends each and every year, but when you don't contend each and every year, if it falls into your lap for one year, you take it. It's kind of like it's it's not entirely the same, but it's similar to what the Vikings had with Brett Favre for a season. Um, right. The idea that, 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 that hey, we're not going to say no to the opportunity to join forces, Peter, with an all-time great quarterback and see where it takes us, and we'll worry about tomorrow when tomorrow comes. How great would it be if Tampa Bay Buccaneers head coach Byron Leftwich, right before the 2023 draft, that he and uh, general manager Jason Light trade a two and a four to Green Bay for 39-year-old quarterback. <laughs> How great would that be? <laughs> that would be I amazing. Like I like it. Just, just time it out over the next 15 or 20 years catch every great quarterback on the tail end of his career for a couple of seasons and then just move on <laughs> to the next one. I kind of like it. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.